Hello, thank you for joining us. Welcome to Schedules 101 at Damon College. My name is Sabrina Fennell. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Student Success, and we're glad you're joining us today. With our presentation today of Schedules 101, we're going to go over how to access your fall schedule, how to interpret uh, your courses, what days they meet, the locations, and then answer questions that you have so that you are prepared and ready to go for the fall semester. Joining me today is Alyssa Crofts, our Associate Director of Academic Advisement. Hi, Alyssa. She is going to give you a complete overview, answer any questions that you have, and I will be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them away, and then we'll come back together at the end um, and wish you well and answer any questions and set up any appointments that you have for any individual questions. Thank you again for joining us, and I will now turn it over to Alyssa. Thank you, Sabrina. And as Sabrina mentioned, we are going to go over Schedules 101. We'll take a look at what you might find on your schedule, also how to access it. And as Sabrina mentioned as well, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat, and we can go over them and answer them as we go along. But we will jump right into Schedules 101. The first thing that you might find on your schedule is a learning community. And this is a requirement for any incoming first year student. It does not matter what your major is, you will have a learning community. This is two courses that are linked together. That means the same students that are registered for one class are also registered for the second class as well. And so the example that we have here is IND 101. It's our freshman seminar and PHI 110. As you can see next to it, it has LC04. And so those two classes would be combined. You must take both of those classes in your learning community. They can't be separated. So you can't say, oh, I want to keep the IND 101. Can I drop the philosophy class? Because they are linked, they must be completed together. Um, and all linked courses do have competencies that count toward your required electives, which I'll talk a little bit more about next. So they are required. It's an institutional requirement. Again, it doesn't matter your major. You do need to have a learning community on your schedule as a first year student. Going along those lines, we have what we call core competencies. This is essentially our gen ed requirements. So again, it comes back to no matter what your major is, these are the requirements that you would need to fulfill uh, and complete. We have effective awareness, civic responsibility, communication skills, contextual integration, critical thinking and problem solving, information literacy, and moral and ethical discernment. The learning community classes that you are registered for are working towards fulfilling some of these competencies. Um, and you will have them for your other electives. Some of your major classes may work towards fulfilling them as well. And this goes along with our next spot, which is core requirements. So you might also find Comp 101 or a composition class on your schedule. And you may also see a math scheduled as well. Now for the composition, Comp 101 is a requirement, again, for any major. So no matter what your major is, you do need to find it. Now, if you see Comp 100 or CMP 100, that's our prerequisite for Comp 101. Our English department does take a look and determine placements for you. And there will be a placement exam during the first week of classes as well. Same thing with math. You may find math on your schedule, uh, depending on your major, it may be a requirement, you may need it uh, as a specific class or to help get into your science sequence if you're a science major. So you may have math on your schedule. If you have Math 97, uh, that would be a class that you would need, again, sort of as that prerequisite to get you into your other math classes. We will also be having a paper math placement during the first week of classes as well. Um, if you don't have a math on your schedule for the fall semester, that's okay. Again, it may depend on your ma major, as every major is a little bit different with what you may need to complete for math. And then the last piece when it comes to our core requirements are electives. So you may find or see classes on your schedule that maybe aren't specific to your major, but they're electives. And you might be wondering why they're on your schedule. Uh, it's, if it's allows, again, it would depend and varies on each student. 
and your major, maybe if you're bringing in credits, but it is working toward fulfilling those core requirements that we talked about, one of those seven competencies that is working towards meeting those degree requirements. Next, I wanna just take a look at a sample schedule. We've kind of talked about some things that you might find on your schedule, the learning community, possibly a math or a comp, but this is just a chance to actually take a look and see what it might look like. So you've got the course title, you have the time, the location, the instructor, and as you can see, the example here for the learning community, we've got IND 101 kind of a little bit down past the middle, and that is LC08. So if we look down, we can see that it is linked with PHI 110, LC08, the philosophical thinking. So again, that's the learning community class for this sample schedule. Those two classes are linked. Again, you must take both of them. You cannot separate them. And then if we go to decode that a little bit further, though, um, classes that have M next to them obviously meet Monday, T is Tuesday, Wednesday would be W, TH is Thursday. So that means if you have a class that has MW next to it, that means it meets Monday and Wednesday. Or if you see MWF, that would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. T slash TH would be Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, sometimes for Thursday, it is listed as R for Thursday and T for Tuesday, which can be a little bit confusing. So you just wanna make sure though that you're aware that you have the correct days and times of when the class and course are meeting. The next thing is the different spots or buildings of where you might have the class. Now, most of our classes for the fall are planned to be in person. So chances are they'll be in one of these buildings. Our AWC is our academic and wellness center. B is our business building. C is, or excuse me, Curtis is Patricia E. Curtis Hall. DS is Dunn SCOTUS. RIC or the RIC is our Research Information Commons building. SH is Shank Hall. VPAC is our Visual and Performing Arts Center. And then WIC is our WIC Center. So if we go back to the sample schedule just to kind of break down. If we look at the location side of things, uh, as you can see, we'll start for, we'll do Bio 109 Lab. So the second one down, it says Don Scotus. It'll then list the classroom. So in this case, it would be in room 301. Um, and it meets, if you can see, it says W. So that would be Wednesday from 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And then if you look at the top for the Bio 109 lecture, it's showing it meets T and TH, so that would be Tuesday, Thursday from 1 to 2.20. But if you look at the location, it says arranged. Now, again, the majority of our classes are in person. We do, though, offer some classes that are online. And so it may show for location arranged. That would mean the class is online. It may not have a designated meeting spot because it's done online. And when we look at online, there's two typical options when it comes to an online course. There's a synchronous course. So in this case, if it's synchronous, that means it's live. You would log in, for example, to a Zoom session, but you would be meeting for that class during a specific time. So in this case, the Bio 109, the time is Tuesday, Thursday from 1 to 2.20. You would be logging in and meeting for that class from 1 to 2.20 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It would like be like you're in the classroom, except there's not a physical spot, but you're online doing it. The second one is asynchronous, and this is where there's not a specific meeting time. It would be done kind of on your own time. You don't have a designated time that you would log in and do it, but you would have specific things on Blackboard to complete and have deadlines to meet. But again, the majority of our classes are going to be in-person face-to-face. Of course, things certainly can change, so it's important to make sure that you are checking your schedule to make sure it's up to date with the days and times that it meets, as well as the room location. Just a quick word about your schedule. So I think one of the biggest transitions for a lot of students from high school is you're used to, for the most part, having your classes scheduled back to back, straight through. Um, and when you look at your schedule, you may find that there are some larger time gaps than you are used to. Initially, you may not think that you uh, may enjoy that or it's not what you're used to, but rest assured you really come to appreciate those time gaps. Uh, you don't have a built-in lunch. You can use the time, obviously, to get something to eat. Uh, some students plan on doing work study where they're able to use that time in between. It's a great time to get some work done, 
We have academic coaches that you'd be able to meet with. There's different clubs and organizations where you might be able to meet with that. You can use that time as well to meet with instructors during office hours. So even though it might not be what you're used to, you'll really come to find that you'll appreciate that time in between classes uh, in between. And we encourage you to attend the classes that first week. Give yourself a chance to get the information, get the syllabi for each course, see what it's like, because you have plenty of time to make adjustments to your schedule, uh, which I'll talk about in a bit. As I mentioned before though too, uh, please note that schedules may change. Things uh, do come up obviously, so you do wanna make sure that you're regularly checking to make sure that your schedule is up to date and accurate. I will show you in just a few minutes how you can access and where to go to get your schedule. But you do wanna make sure that you're also checking your daemon email regularly as well. Now, some of you may have taken college or AP credits in high school or IB. We've received a lot of the scores, uh, particularly AP. Some of those scores did come in in July, but we're also still getting some of those scores in the month of August. Um, so we're looking at that. If you took any credits though, and you have not sent your transcripts in, whether it's AP, IB, or from uh, a college that you earned credit from in high school, you want to make sure that you send that information into us as soon as possible. So that way we can make sure that your fall schedule is set. Uh, once we get that, if there needs to be any changes or adjustments, we will make those and we'll email you letting you know of the update for your schedule. But if you've already taken a class, so for example, maybe you took a composition class in high school and you want to send that transcript in, that could potentially mean that you don't have to take Comp 101 because you've already earned that credit. So again, if you haven't sent the credits or your transcripts in yet, you want to make sure that you do so as soon as possible. So that way we can make sure those credits are coming in and your fall schedule is accurate and up to date. So like I said before, we encourage you to attend the class first before changing it. Just as with anything, you don't want to judge a book by its cover. You don't want to judge the course based on just the title of it. We've had far too often students, they would want to change a class, they do, and then they come to find out that it's a really great class. Uh, the history class that you took in high school it's probably going to be a lot different than maybe the history class that you would take in, in college. And so we always encourage you to go to that class first. Again, experience it, check it out and see if it's something that you would like or need, because you still have plenty of time to adjust your schedule. We have what we call our add drop period, and that's the first week of classes. Um, and so when you want to change a class, we will ask you, have you attended first? And like I said, that first week is our ad drop period. So classes begin uh, on that Tuesday, I think it's September 7th. You would have until the following Tuesday, September 14th, to make any changes to your schedule. And that's why we encourage you to go to the class first, try it out. Again, there's a reason why it's on there. It's not just on there just because it is fulfilling major requirements, elective requirements, and we encourage you to go to it first. But if we need to make any changes, you do have until September 14th to make those adjustments. As I said, again, that's something if you want to make sure you put that date in there. Um, and when we're talking about add drop, so essentially our add drop period, this is where you would be able to, again, make a change to your schedule. You can drop a class, you can add it with no penalty. And that's what that period is designed to, to be about. So again, you've got until September 14th. In our office, we... Uh, would be able to assist you in that case. And we would have late hours for many of those days during that time period, which we would give you that information at that time as well. Next, I want to talk about the where you can actually find your schedule. So we finished up kind of decoding it, breaking it down, what you might find on there, but where can you actually find it and where can you go to find the most accurate and up-to-date schedule? I know there's a lot of information out there. You can view your schedule in a number of spots. The Connect app, you can view it obviously in Blackboard, which some of your classes may be using, but you wanna make sure that you view your schedule in our self-service or our uh, student planning portion. And you can do that by logging into your My Daemon. So if you go to just our Daemon website, daemon.edu, and you click on My Daemon, it's then going to have you log in. And once you log in, 
On the left-hand side, you'll see a quick tools tab. It's a little screwdriver and wrench. If you click on that, you'll see at the bottom, it'll say self-service. Once you click on self-service, it'll bring you into the main menu. So we've got student finance, course catalog, student planning, and grades. In this case, to view your schedule, you'd wanna click on student planning. And once you go into student planning, it actually will show at the bottom your fall schedule, but we wanna get a little bit more information. So we're going to click on the plan your degree and register for classes. So this is where you'll be able to go to get a more in-depth view of your schedule. And the nice thing about self-service is you can have really two views of your schedule. We have more of a list view, which is kind of nice, but I really like the calendar view, especially if you're a visual person, you can actually see where your classes fit in and how it looks, uh, which is really nice. So in this case, we've got our, our visual view of when the classes are taking place and uh, when you've got them. And then if you want to print it off, obviously we've got that printer button right there at the top, um, but this is a great way to see it. And like I said, schedules may change, right? We have up until the 14th, but sometimes classes shift or maybe the classroom changes. And so this is where it's helpful to go to make sure that it's up to date before the semester starts. To get more information about the classes. So we were just looking at the calendar view, but on the left-hand side, that list view, you can see a little bit more information about the course. So for example, we have Art 101, Intro to Visual Arts. You might wanna know a little bit more information. What's the class about? What's the details? And you can even look for bookstore information, which is very helpful. Uh, but as you can see, it does show the, the credits, it's graded the instructor and where it is, but where does it actually meet? So if you click directly on that, so the blue Art 101 link, it will pull up the information about the course. So it'll give you the, the details a little bit. So it'll tell you where it's meeting. So this class um, would be meeting in our VPAC or Visual and Performing Arts Center. It would let you know if there are seats available. So in this case, it's currently full, but you're registered for it. But that means if you were, if you wanted to change it, um, most likely that would probably fill up. There might be another student that would take it, which again goes back to why we encourage you to attend the class first because then if it's something that you want to stick with, you're already there. It's always easier to, to, to do that rather than drop it and then try and add it back going along. But then we get into the course description. So that gives you a little bit more information. The first line talks about a core competency. I mentioned this at the beginning of the presentation. We have our seven core competencies. And in this case, the ART 101, it shows that it fulfills the effective awareness competency, which again, it's an institutional requirement for any major, but it shows, okay, this is what it's fulfilling. And then it gives you a description of the course, any additional information. And then at the bottom, it, if you click on the bookstore information link, that would provide you with the bookstore uh, information, books, texts, any material that you may need for the class, which is kind of nice. We also have, like I said, you can print it off. So if you maybe have an update to your schedule or you lost a schedule, or maybe you just don't have a copy of it yet, but you wanna have a hard copy. If you click on the print button, that will print off the list of your schedule. So you would then be able to see it like the sample one um, that we had. And again, it breaks it down. It gives you the, the course, the time, where it meets, and the instructor um, as well. So we've talked about the actual schedule itself, where you can go to find your schedule. And again, just to recap with that is when you're looking at your schedule and you want to make sure that you have everything set and it's accurate, you want to make sure that you go to self-service. That's where you're going to be able to have the most up-to-date schedule. But another nice feature on our self-service is our timeline. For those of you who maybe transferred in credits, maybe we've received the transcripts, or even if we haven't yet, if they're uh, in route, there's a great way that you're able to kind of check and see if we've received that and what those courses have come in or what the equivalent credit is here at Damon. So in your self-service, you'll see at the top, there's right next to the schedule tab, we have a timeline tab. If you click on the timeline tab, that's going to pull up and it's going to show 
it's really nice. It gives you a timeline of the classes. Now, as a first year student, your timeline won't be very long because you're just starting off. But eventually you'll have the timeline of all of your semesters. And it's really helpful when you're planning out your classes to make sure you're meeting your degree requirements. For now, though, it's helpful when you see the non-term courses. This is the spot all the way to the left. And this will show any courses that you have transferred in. So as you can see for this student, they have AP credit for Comp 101, they have an environmental science, a history, but it shows the classes that they have transferred in. They will show the Damon equivalency though. So it might be a little bit different depending on where you took the credit or the class. Um, sometimes if we don't have a specific course equivalent, it will still come in, but it might be listed as uh, selected topics course that might it might have 47 after it so at 247 147 it doesn't mean you're not getting the credit that's typically coming in as an elective it's just not a specific class that we offer here at Damon but the credit is coming in as an elective the only other thing with the timeline that I want to touch on is when it comes to math so at the bottom of this example it shows MTH and then it has 90 and then EQ next to it that is math equivalency. So that's not credit that you would be bringing in. That's from our math department. They took the time to determine what your placement was. And so essentially that's just showing where you are uh, in the system. So we know what the right math placement is for you. But as you can see right above it, it says math 134 and AP, and that's where it shows three credits. So that's something that was transferred in. But the MTH 90 or the MTH 97 EQ, that's just showing equivalency. It's not credit. It's not anything that you're transferring in. Um, but the timeline is really helpful. So for those of you who maybe have already sent in transcripts or your AP or IB scores have been sent in, you can go in here in your self-service and check to see what those equivalencies are and to make sure that we've got everything that we need. If you haven't sent those in yet, again, you just want to make sure that you get those transcripts and scores sent to us as soon as possible. So that way we can make sure that your fall schedule is set. The last piece that I want to talk about is your faculty advisor. So you will be assigned an advisor in your department for any major. If you're undeclared, you are assigned to work with an advisor in the Student Success Center. But a faculty advisor, uh, this is someone in your major department, and they will be the person that you'll work with when it comes to registering. They will answer you know, questions that you might have about the major and so forth. And so they're a great resource to have. And there's an easy way in your self-service to find out who your advisor is. So if you are in your self-service, right next to that timeline tab, so again at the top, You've got schedule, next to that is timeline, which we were just looking at. But right next to that, there's an advising tab. If you click on the advising tab, then it's gonna pull up and it will show who your uh, advisor is. And in this case, it will list it. It even gives you an opportunity if you click on it to just be able to send them an email, which is nice. You can also compose a note below. The one thing that I will say with the note though is they don't get notified of the note, so it's probably best to start with an email. Um, but the note is helpful if you want to kind of keep track of your conversations that you have. But that's where you'll be able to view your advisor. If you have a hard copy of your paper, if you were at orientation, it should be listed on there. But if you log into your self-service and you go to the advising tab, you don't see an advisor listed, let us know and we'll make sure that we get the your advisor up there so you know who to contact. And we encourage you to reach out to your advisor, maybe not necessarily the first week or so of the semester, but it would be nice to make that contact with them the first few weeks or so, because again, those will be the advisors that will be working with you throughout your time here uh, at Damon. And it's great to make that connection and, and put a face with the name. So if you do have any questions, I know we've have the opportunity for questions in the, the chat. So if anybody does, feel free to, to put those in there and we're happy to answer them. But if you do have any questions, maybe more specifically about your schedule, you can contact us in Academic Advisement. Our number is right there. 
Um, we are typically in the office Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And any of the advisors would be able to, to assist you. We did create your first year schedule and we did so with, with care, keeping in mind all of the uh, major requirements, potential credits and things that you're bringing in, institutional requirements. And so again, we put a lot of time and effort into making sure that we're setting you up for a good fall semester. But if you do have questions, feel free to, to contact us. If you have really any questions for your fall semester, even through that ad drop period, uh, come see us at the Student Success Center. We will be able to, to work with you and assist. If we have to make any adjustments, we can do that. I know I mentioned you will have a faculty advisor, but for your fall schedule, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we can work with you for that. Before I go any further, though, uh, it doesn't look like we have any questions so far. But if you do, again, don't hesitate to type them in the, the chat box and we can go over them. I'll take a little bit of time, though, and ask some potential general questions that we typically get that maybe you're thinking about or you didn't think about but might be helpful to know. So some of the questions that we typically get asked, uh, I took a class in high school, for example, a US history or pre-calculus class. Why do I need to take the same class again? This is a great question. We get this uh, asked a lot. And the answer to that, though, is that a high school class compared to a college class, it's a different level. So what you learned in your US history class in high school will probably be different than what you would learn in a college level class. And same thing with math, it would be a different level. So you know, high school level pre-calculus would be different from a college level pre-calculus. And so if you took the class though and earned college credit for it, so maybe you took it in high school, but you were earning credit, let's say for example, through a community college or something, that could count, but you'd have to make sure that you get the transcript sent from that college to us to have it count. Another question might be though, I took a class for college or AP credit in high school. Why am I registered for it? Most likely it's because we have yet to receive the score or the transcript. If that's the case, you wanna make sure that you let us know what credit you're anticipating bringing in. For the most part, a lot of students, when you completed your survey for our orientation, you did indicate what credits you were anticipating bringing in. But if you didn't, you want to make sure that you let us know. You can contact us in the Student Success Center and let us know and we can make that adjustment. But chances are, if it's still on your schedule, we may not have received that credit that you have coming in. And so once we do, we'd be able to make that adjustment to your schedule. Uh, another question might be, and I know we talked about this, it's good review, but I want to drop one of my learning community or link courses and keep the other. Can I do this? The answer is no. So as I mentioned, a learning community, these are two classes, they're linked together, so you can't separate them. If you drop one, you must drop both. You cannot keep one and not the other. Um, again, we encourage you go to that class or go to all of the classes the first week give it a try. If we need to make adjustments, we can definitely do that. But remember, no matter what your major is, as an incoming first year student, you are required to take a learning community. Going along those lines, two of my courses have LC listed next to them. What does this mean and do I need to take them? Again, this is another question that we get. We, we did talk about it, but it's good review here. So learning community, the LC, those are your link courses. Again, you do need to take it. It's required. It's an institutional requirement. That means it doesn't matter what your major is. You do need to take them. But as I mentioned at the beginning, these classes fulfill your required electives. They're also working towards fulfilling the requirements of your competencies. We have seven different ones that we talked about. So they're working toward fulfilling those requirements which are needed for your major. And again, you do need to take them. Most of you filled out though with your orientation survey. You filled out your top four preferences. We did our best to go with your top four preferences that you listed. Uh, if we weren't able to, it was mainly based on you know, time conflicts with your major classes or um, other things along that nature, but we do the best we can to get those top four preferences that you list. 
I noticed that my chemistry lab listed is listed as zero credits. Why am I not getting the credit? This is a really good question and it's one that we get asked often. When it comes to science classes in particular, ones that have labs, some of them have a lab that is broken up with a lecture. So for example, a Bio 109 class has a lecture and a lab portion. The lecture portion is worth three credits, the lab portion is worth one credit. So they have separate grades. But in this case for chemistry 110, that is the lecture and the lab are actually combined. You have the lecture, which that is where the four credits are listed. So you're still earning the one credit for the lab, but because the grade is combined between both the lecture and the lab, it's listed as zero credits for the lab, but that credit is actually being applied to the lecture portion. If you see that on your schedule and you wonder, okay, I've got Chem 110 lab, it's listed as zero credits, make sure you check for Chem 110 lecture and see if there's four credits. If there's four credits there, you're in good shape. You're still earning the credit, but that would be the difference. There's a few science classes that would have that, um, but not all do, but that's why it is. So you're getting the credit. It's just sometimes for those classes, the lecture and the lab grade are combined into one as opposed to two separate grades. Now, hopefully this won't happen, but sometimes you may want to change your major. Maybe you thought you had a specific one going in and realized that wasn't what you wanted or the right fit. If you are looking to change your major, you can contact us in the Student Success Center. We can obviously talk about your options. The nice thing is, though, a lot of the classes that you need for your first semester, you need no matter what the major is. So again, not anticipating that you may want to change your major, but sometimes that does come up. Or if you have questions about that, don't hesitate to contact us at the Student Success Center. Again, our number, it's 716-839-8228. Uh, how do I find out who my faculty advisor is? This is quick review too. We just, we went through that, but if you're in your self-service, there's an actual advising tab. It's right next to that timeline tab. If you click on that, it should show you who your advisor is and even give you an opportunity if you wanted to, to, to email them uh, as well. Now, again, if you log in and you don't see anything, there's not an advisor listed, let us know in the Student Success Center and we'll make sure that we get that updated so you know who your advisor is when you start your fall semester. Uh, I want to declare a minor. How do I go about this? We get this question quite a bit as well. Uh, minors are certainly great and we have a number of minors that we offer. You can contact us in the Student Success Center and we can talk about different options and see how that might fit in. It may depend on your major, but a lot of times you're able to fit in the minor requirements to fulfill your major requirements as well. You're not necessarily adding anything extra. But it's always good to contact us at the Student Success Center and we can take a look and see what might be a good fit. For minors, you don't necessarily have to declare it right away. Sometimes you may just want to take a class, see how it goes, and then once you've taken that class and if it confirms that you want to declare the minor, you can do that. Uh, but typically, if you know and you have a minor that you want to declare, you're able to do so at the beginning of the fall semester. This question's another good review from what we talked about, but why are there time gaps in my schedule? I was hoping to have my classes back to back. Um, again, with the time gaps, it's not what you might be used to, but you'll most likely really come to appreciate those time gaps. And there's reasons why I think we always try to, when looking at scheduling, give you that time because again, you don't have a built-in lunch. It gives you a chance to get some work done. If you're you know, work study, it gives you a chance to meet with an academic coach. You even can take a nap if you want to, but you'll really come to appreciate those gaps. And one of the things to it, Damon, uh, we are a small school, so we may only have one section available for a specific class, and that might just be when it's offered and how it works. But um, usually in talking with students, they really actually end up enjoying having some time gaps in between their classes. They can get that work done. They can get some of the other things that they want to do or participate in clubs and organizations or any events that we have on campus, which is really nice. And again, you don't have that lunch built in, so it helps with that as well. And then I have a question about my schedule. Who do I contact? So this will be sort of our wrap up here. But if you have a question, again, 
please contact us in the Student Success Center. Our number is 716-839-8228. We can assist you with any questions that you have for your fall schedule. Like I said before, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. If you're on campus, you can stop by. Our office is located in the Research Information Commons building. We're in the back corner, but we would be able to assist you with any questions that you have about your fall schedule. Again, if there's any adjustments that need to be made, you have credits or anything coming in, that's where you want to come. You want to talk to us and we would be able to, to help you with that. The last day to add or drop or make any changes to your schedule is September 14th. So anywhere between now and then, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to reach out to contact us. And that is all that I've got for my presentation. Uh, Sabrina, I'll throw it over to you, but do we have any questions? No, thank you so much, Alyssa. Hopefully by attending Schedules 101 today, you feel better prepared. We've answered questions about your schedule. Alyssa did a great job. Um, but like she mentioned, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we look forward to working with you and seeing you um, in the fall in a few weeks. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Human College, we strive to help every student reach their educational and professional goals. With exceptional resources and one-of-a-kind learning experiences, our graduate and professional programs will put you on the right path to career success. Our graduate programs include applied behavior analysis, education, nursing, social work, and more. Seven of our 11 graduate programs are open to any undergraduate major. 